Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're back on our Project Red Fire, attacking the cooling system again. Last time you saw, we upgraded the intercooler core underneath the blower and we picked up over five gallons per minute flow. So clearly that old core was pretty clogged up. This car sat for a few years. So going along those lines, we're pretty sure the heat exchange is clogged too. The flow numbers also showed kind of subpar performance. So instead of just swapping it out, I'm gonna take the opportunity to show you what's involved in putting a larger GT500 uh, heat exchanger into an O3 Cobra. It's a little bit more than just bolt-in. Uh, we're also going to go through the one-inch barb upgrades, putting these larger barbs on, how that process goes about and why you do it, and uh, we're going to check what kind of flow improvements, if any, these do. We'll flow test it before and after. This unit also has the, the uh, optional really powerful fans on it. 11-inch uh, small fans put out a decent amount of air. <laughs> and we're also going to make a, a follow-up video um, Regarding these fans, we're going to do with and without. There's some people that say the fans actually hinder <laughs> flow and cause poorer performance than if they were just um, not there at all. So we're going to test that. We're going to put some... All right, let's talk about the cooler itself. This particular one is from AFCO, but you don't have to use AFCO. There's a variety of quality heat exchanger manufacturers out there. You could get a VMP one, Revan Racing, and so forth. Uh, the key here is quality. Uh, if it's, you know, just because we find one slightly bigger doesn't mean it's gonna work better. It has to be a quality core in there. Something else to take note of is you might've heard some of these heat exchangers are referred to as single pass, dual pass, or triple pass. And you might be wondering, what exactly does that mean? Well, it's how many times the fluid flows across the heat exchanger before it exits the other end. So if you look here, you can see this weld right here. That is literally a separator so that this upper and lower tank are two separate units. So when fluid comes in, it can't just bypass here and flow out because of this here. It has to flow all the way through. On the other side, it's just a completely open tank, no, no baffles. So it flows all the way through to the one side. That's a single pass. It goes up, comes all the way back, and that's its second pass. A triple pass, of course, would have the dividers set up on both sides in such a way that it would flow once, twice, and then a third time and come out. Or a single pass, of course, would have no baffle here at all. It'd have an inlet here and the outlet on the other side. So that's what that means if you're wondering. Now, the other common thing we do to get more flow in here is to exchange these uh, inlets and outlets here for these larger one-inch diameter bungs. Pretty huge, should get a lot more flow. But we don't just cut it right off here and put it here. We're actually gonna get the center of this tank and mount it over there and then plug that hole. It's already been done on the one on the car, I'll show you in a second. And then on this side, we're gonna cut this one off, plug that hole, and we're gonna put it over here. And the idea is to get the most straight through direct line of flow, and that's also the reason for centering the tank, is the idea that we're gonna get a better flow, combined with a larger diameter. How much it really uh, makes a difference? You know, there's a lot of opinions out there. Uh, I have my own as well. <laughs> but nothing beats some science. So let's actually hook this up flow test it, and then we'll make the, the um, modifications, weld it up and change it. We'll reflow test it again and see what happens. Okay, here's a nice comparison side by side of one that's been modified and one that's still stock. Remember, these are from 2007 through 2012 GT500s. So the bracketry is even gonna be different. In fact, if you look here, you'll see this extra piece of bracketry here and here. And you'll notice over here, it's been cut off and removed to create clearance in this fitment. And the reason for removing this bottom one is because of this extra bung that you're going to weld in. You can't see it there because it's sitting right behind, but it's going to go right there. We can't put this one in the center of the tank because it's going to be lined up with this, which is going to line up with this bar, which means you wouldn't be able to attach a hose. So that's why this one's going to sit down just a little bit. But see how low this one sits here? And you can see how this one was moved up and a patch panel was put in there to cover the original hole. And that's how that goes over there. Now, as far as fitting it into the car over here, there's a couple ways. I've seen people that took the original crash bar and cut it and sunk it in there and made it work. Um, if you're an average DIY guy, with, uh, forget about it. That metal is super, super hard. It doesn't drill and cut like regular steel. Just remove the whole crash bar. Do the hoop bar style like uh, was done on this car. I did this to my zinc as well, probably about five years ago. Um, and I designed and created these little brackets that go here and bolted this up. And I, I know I probably wasn't the first person to do it, I'm sure, but I was one of the first people to post it up on SVT Performance and it, it really took off and caught on. And, and nowadays people actually sell these hoop bars 
with that bracket pre-welded on, ready to go. So that makes it super easy. Uh, one thing I would do differently here is you can see this one was bolted directly metal on metal. Not good. Uh, radiators, heat exchangers, cores like this do not like vibrations. They tend to crack and leak in all sorts of places. That's why if you look at the OEM radiators, AC condensers on pretty much any car, they're always rubber isolated. And I've certainly been through that firsthand. You know, one of our Fox bodies, daily driven one, uh, it's had metal to metal contact on, on its radiator. And I'd say in the last six years, it's been through, I don't know, about four radiators and, and expensive quality ones too. Uh, we finally addressed that, made it all rubber to rubber, and hopefully that lasts. But it just shows the importance of don't do this. To make this transition here, I'm going to use just a single connector so we don't have multiple bulky pieces causing an additional resistance. I want to measure just the resistance of this and not this. So we got a three quarter inch side on here where we're going to connect up. And the one inch hose is just going to slip right over these threads and attach. We've got a real nice smooth transition on the inside here. I think this will provide minimal impact to our testing. Okay, here it is. Let me show you what we got going on. It starts off here. We got this little reservoir with some fluid. It goes down straight into an EMP pump. We've got a flow sensor, curls around one inch line. We come up here and it goes down to our three quarter inch reducer, three quarter inch input. It's gonna go through a heat exchanger, three quarter back to the one inch and back to the reservoir. So we're gonna have just this loop going here, testing just the flow of our heat exchanger. Let's cut these off. Let's get one inch barbs in here, reflow it and see if anything changes. All pipes are cut off and we got a new larger holes drilled. This looks quite a bit larger than this one because this still has the pipe wall thickness in here. I didn't bother cutting it all the way out. I just sheared it off. Now, originally I was just going to put a little plate over that hole and then weld that one in there next to it. But I noticed on this car, someone made a bigger plate and just put it across like that serves, covers the hole and has a, a mounting surface for there. And so I decided I'm gonna try that out. It looks kind of nice, you know, just add a little bit of rigidity here. You know, a little bit of extra strength when you're muscling a, a pipe on and off or anything like that. And the little plate I made will just cover up that original hole right there. And of course, we've got this other hole here where we'll put this one in. So I think we're in good shape. Time to start welding. Okay, gonna do some pressure testing here. Check out these welds. That right there is a pinhole leak, and that's why we always pressure check. All right, we got our one inch bungs welded in, hooked all back up, same familiar test. Moment of truth, let's see what happens. Well, there we have it. 14.7 gallons per minute with the one inch tubes. Uh, gotta admit, I'm not real impressed. It jumped up 1.2 gallons per minute. And that's best case scenario because we have the EMP pump blowing straight through the heat exchanger, through the reservoir and back, just in a cyclic loop. It doesn't even have the intercooler core in there. We don't have a long set of tubes to the trunk and back. Uh, this is highest pressure, highest gains possible. And, eh, you know, I'm a little disappointed. I thought we'd see more. It kind of shows that you can bypass this one inch mod on the heat exchanger and still get really good performance. Obviously, if you're uh, like some of us <laughs> and you're trying to squeeze every last bit of performance and you want that extra, you know, 1.2 gallons a minute through the heat exchanger, uh, by all means do this mod. But I gotta say, it's a little hard to justify. One nice piece about these AFCO units is they do come with these pretty nifty little grommets. Uh, you drop one side through here and the other side flops over, clamps right in, and it even has, even has a little metal tube push down through the center to create a hard ridge, you know, so that the two ends can bolt together. Uh, one end has got an integrated metal, and of course they supply a whole bag of hardware and washers and everything to, to bolt it up. Pretty slick. Unfortunately, the person who built these tabs off of this crash bar didn't take advantage of that at all. Uh, it barely overlaps this one and there's nothing here. So they used an existing hole and just drilled one up top and made the plate like that. So I'm just gonna get my own scrap pieces of rubber mount the new one in there to rubber isolate it, but it would have been nice to use the uh, supplied pieces. All 
All right, new one is in. And it looks almost identical to the one that was there. <laughs> so much for that. Well, except we got a little bit of play here now. Not play, but a gap, because we got some rubber isolation between the bracket and the unit. Still pretty solid, but isolated. Okay, now one thing we didn't cover was the wiring for the fans and how to hook them up. So one option is you could use this included harness. AFCO includes this. Now, of course, it's meant as a direct plug and play into an 07 through 12 GT500, which we do not have a GT500, but it's super simple. There's nothing special about this. Essentially, you know, you've got two relays, there's inline fuses, which is nice, and of course the correct plugs to plug right onto the fans. And then you've got, you know, power wire, trigger wire, ground. So super simple, basic stuff. As far as where to trigger these relays, uh, one of the common things people will do is come over here to the intercooler pump relay right here. And you can just pop that off and you'll see there's a relay under this cover. And you can use the trigger for this relay to trigger those relays. In fact, you can see someone tapped off here before when they were um, powering up the intercooler pump on this one, the EMP pump, as a, as a trigger wire, not the power wire, of course. <laughs> so, uh, you know, how does this work? Well, with the stock tune, the intercooler pump turns on, I believe it's 20 seconds after the engine started. And there's also a minimum requirement temperature from memory. I think it's like 70 degrees IIT2. Below that, it doesn't turn on. So, but that's on a stock tune. Your tuner can change that to whatever he wants. So just bear that in mind. If you start the car and the pump doesn't turn on instantly, that's why there are parameters in the tune. You can speak to your tuner and see what those are to figure that out. As far as how I wired up these fans over here, I used a fan speed controller to vary their rate of speed based on the temperature of the intercooler course fluid in the reservoir actually that's where the sensor is and it, you know the ms3 controls the fan speed control controls the fans it's a little bit more complex but it's way nicer because the fans aren't very loud and they're only used when they're actually needed i have a whole different video on that so i'm not going to go into all that now but check out that video if you want to learn more about how that works the cooling system is all back together we got all our hoses hooked up everything's all together we got fluid it's just water for testing right now we'll switch to coolant you know once we're good so we got the pump flowing out of here, straight into the bottom of the intercooler, out the top of the intercooler, bottom of the heat exchanger, out the top of the heat exchanger, back to the reservoir. Now let's flow test the whole system as a whole and see what we've gained. New intercooler core, heat exchanger, a new setup going on here. Let's try it out. Okay, that was a giant mess. I forgot the stupid tank had this horrible return design. I mean, it, it basically jet blasts the back of the lid like a pressure washer's under it the whole time. Probably why I can't get it to stop leaking. You know, had I been smart, when I was fixing all the problems with this thing, I would have moved the uh, return to this tank down a few inches below the water level. That would have solved that, but here we are. <laughs> so, the flow, not bad. I got a 11 point four nine something I'll put on the video it was basically about 3.3 gallons per minute increase overall not too shabby but the main benefit here is going to be our new cores that are not clogged anymore and are going to have much better heat transfer properties I'm especially excited to see how well that VMP core does I hear a lot of great things about it and cars I've tuned show very promising numbers be nice to see it in person here for myself so finish reassembling all this get this mess cleaned up the bumper back on and then uh Hey, look at that. I fixed it. <laughs> Fluid's running, pumps on, nothing spraying out everywhere. You can just visually look in here, see that it's all working. And, uh, but the more important thing is it's no longer blasting up on the lid. It's like a power washer was blasting on the back of the lid before. I think this might be the final portion or key to uh, getting this lid to stop leaking. So it might be in good shape now. I have some footage showing how I made this happen. I'll show you guys now. All right, because I'm an idiot and I did not move this down below when I was modifying this reservoir and fixing everything on it, it still blows up way too high, sprays out everywhere as you saw. And of course, I should have moved that down below the water level and this deflector here or baffle should have been moved more of an angle or removed or changed up because it causes the water pressure to shoot up super high anyway. So I needed to come up with something else. I went ahead and I made this little guy. 
So it's a piece of aluminum and I welded a part going up like that, drilled a hole in it and I have a matching hole drilled over there. And then I have some rubber on the edges here to seal off against this baffle here makes an L shape in here that seats in there like that up at an angle and deflects the fluid down. So essentially I just got to drop it down in there like that, roll it around, it'll bolt right there. And that does the trick. And the reason I made it bolt in and not, I didn't just weld it in there is because when you have to service this and work on it, you need to be able to get a socket down under here, the bottom of these screw heads to remove this if you ever have to work on this lid. So that way it's removable and uh, you can still work on it. All right guys, originally this video had this clip in it. I'll take this puppy out and see what it does. But we're kind of out of time. I try to keep these videos around the 10 to 15, maybe 20 minute mark. I think that's a comfortable time. Hopefully you guys are enjoying that. So next time we're going to take this car out and start testing this cooling system. I want to see how this VMP cooler does and the rest of the system in, in, as a whole, you know. We're going to go out and do some street driving and some pretty good 90 degree weather. And we're going to start getting harder and harder and harder until we're just ripping on this thing nonstop, back to back, over and over and over and just see what happens. I think it's some interesting stats, some good data, so hopefully you guys will enjoy it. So until next time, be kind to one another. See you guys later. Fans on it. Fans, put out fans. Fans. Fans, some people say they actually...